What if I told you that using 3D in web is so simple that once you start, you won't want to go 2D again? No, no, don't take the blue pill. You don't have to use 3JS or speedrun the Blender Donut tutorial, even though I think you probably should at some point in the future. But you can start from something simpler. You can make cool 3D websites with complex animations and scroll effects just using the Spline and GSAP. Spline is a free web-based and real-time 3D design tool with cloud-based storage that has great export options for JavaScript, React, 3JS, and so many other formats. GSAP is a JavaScript library that makes animation animating the web so much easier and prettier. And just so you know, this is not an ad. I like them so much, I might even prefer this to no-code solutions like a spline in Framer or Webflow. So let's see how these two can make a website like this, which is a concept design for a custom keyboard company that makes absolutely useless gaming keyboards. Step 1. Design a website. Okay, hold up. But Jux, that's literally the trickiest part. I know, but just look at this or this or this. Great examples of both 3D models of their product with simple minimal UI. So the first question is, what do you need a 3D model for? For example here, I want to showcase a keyboard. So I started with a very simple hero section showing the model and a text saying, your games, your keyboard. I mean, it's catchy, right? Please say yes. Next, we can scroll down to see two features of this keyboard. And that's about it. Now I need an actual model of a custom gaming keyboard. Step 2. 3D modeling. This is a spline workspace. It has some of the basic functionalities you often use in Blender or other 3D tools, like editing, sculpting, materials, animations, physics, and even game mechanics, but much simpler. The keyboard is somewhere inside this cube, and we just need to take it out. This is the general process, but if you want, you can slow it down and follow along, or let me know in the comments if you'd like to know more about spline itself. So here's a simple keyboard with WASD, E, and Q. Nope, no jumping or reloading for you. We have several export options like an embedded viewer, code export, image, video, and 3D file formats. Step 3. Preparing the code. First, you gotta do the basics. Good old HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever framework you want. Here, I'll just use vanilla JavaScript. So once I'm done with HTML and CSS, I'll go over on Spline and grab this JavaScript code. It creates a new app and loads a Spline file. To make this work, we need to create a canvas in HTML, and once that's done, the model loads instantly. Now it's time to animate. I mean, animate. First, we need to access the keyboard through the code and do stuff with it directly instead of the whole canvas. I know you guys all name your layers in every single design software, but I secretly don't. So I'll group every key and board and name it. Then I'll create a constant and find the object keyboard from Spline. Step 4. GSAP Basics We need to add these GSAP scripts to the project, which will help us create animation timelines and trigger certain actions at the same time while scrolling. Let's get into action now. In the beginning, I'll set a scale and position for the keyboard, which places it right here. And then I want it to go through these sections and reach the bottom of the page. So let's create an animation timeline that's triggered while scrolling down to each of these sections, like part 1, 2, and 3. Then start each at a certain point, for example, when the top of part 1 reaches the center of the screen and end it when the bottom of part 1 reaches the bottom of the screen. Plus, enable scrubbing so the animation progresses as we scroll. Now we can go to the end of the timeline and use the to method to basically add an animation to the keyboard so it changes to a certain position, scale, or rotation, which makes the overall animation look like this. Now it's time to bring the big tools out. Step 5. Spline and GSAP animations. Spline itself has built-in animations. For example, I created one that simulates clicking by basically creating two states for each key and transitioning between them. And another one that kind of turns around and reveals more colors by creating several states for each key and assigning different colors. Then I'll select the keyboard itself and create two events. Key down for the clicking animation and mouse down for the color switcher. I'll set up transitions between different states for different keys or objects. Now all the animations are triggered by one object, the keyboard. Why the keyboard? Why not just trigger each key or object on its own? Great question. You don't have to. We're just doing this because in the code, we can easily trigger an event assigned to the keyboard upon entering a section, like the key down event, and have all the animations play together as planned instead of triggering events for objects one by one. That's right, work smarter, not harder. But wait, how do we even know about these spline features in code? Well, thanks to the spline API. It lists all the information you need to interact with your objects in the code. Step 6. The little things. 
Now this works well and all, but this keyboard is kind of frozen in its place, which is just devastating. Let's fix that by adding an animation to the keyboard so it rotates 360 degrees around the Y axis, make it repeat with a value of minus one, a duration of 10 seconds so it would rotate slowly like this, and set ease to none so it would rotate with a monotonous and linear speed. All right, now we've only just scratched the surface of the capabilities these two platforms give us. Do you see that? Yeah, that, that's us. And we kind of need to look around and find out what's down there. Sometimes it's the little things, like this keyboard effect on the text that says keyboard. <laughs> if you ever need inspiration, you can find them on stacksorted.com, which is an open source collection of the best design effects based on elements, and you can contribute to it too. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there and see you on the next one.